Exorcisms deals with the devil and a whole lot of upset priests. Today we are diving into the top 10 evil people cursed by the devil himself. Before we dive into this list today guys, I just want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is that awesome new documentary streaming service that you don't want to miss out on. They have so many documentaries and docu-series for whatever your interests are. Do you like drama, history, nature, space, whatever your thing is, Magellan TV has a documentary for you and they also add new titles literally every single week so there will always be a new thing for you to look out for. Lately, since summer is coming up again here in Canada, I've been watching a lot of earth and nature docs and lately I watched Vanishing Dragons with my Magellan TV subscription and I absolutely loved it. Basically, it's about the insane dragons that live in the Galapagos. I don't mean like Game of Thrones dragons of course, I'm talking about the weird and wonderful creatures that are the prehistoric marine iguanas. For millions and millions of years, these animals have learned how to survive and adapt, but in the last 15 years, all of a sudden, their population has shrunk by extremely worrisome numbers. The documentary covers what it is that is causing this and how we can help protect this wonderful species from becoming another animal added to the extinction list. It's a visually stunning documentary, but it really also opens up your eyes to another world, the life of these real life dragons. If Magellan TV sounds up your alley, which come on, how could it not be? The good news is that now is the perfect time to check them out. Magellan TV has decided to give most amazing top 10 viewers a free one month trial to check out their amazing service. And all you gotta do is hit the link in the description box and head over there to start watching. It's not one of those skimpy seven day trials, it's the full month. So, and it's for a limited time only. So don't wait around, hit that link and enjoy. All right, on to the list. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Jonathan. Moulton. Jonathan is a man who was born in 1726 and he was known for his military career. He served in King George's War as well as in the French and Indian Wars, but after his service is where this story really starts. Basically, after his time fighting was over, he went on to become one of New England's wealthiest men. This caused heads to swivel and rumors to swirl because this wasn't something that was normally seen. This all gave way for the rumor that Jonathan had struck this luck of fortune because he was actually working with the devil. People began to say that for financial gain, he in turn gave his eternal devotion and even his soul over to the devil. The devil would visit him every month in order to fill his boot up with gold. You know what happens with things like this though, people get greedy. It is said that despite this lavish lifestyle he was already living, he wanted more and this led him to make the mistake of trying to trick the devil. He cut a hole in the floor above his basement and placed a boot over it which also had a hole in the heel. Of course he did this so that when the devil came with the gold, he'd get a whole basement full rather than just a boot. But the devil certainly caught on. From there, it is said that he burned down Jonathan's house along with all of the gold that lay inside. So the moral of the story is don't try and trick the devil. Just kidding, it's don't be greedy. Moving on to our number nine spot today, we have Laura. Okay, so I like to believe that exorcisms are a thing of the past, but that is certainly not true. For this story, we're only taking it back a few years to 2015. This is when a 22 year old woman who is only known by the name Laura went to a local Lutheran church where the those around her prayed for her soul and for redemption. The church's bishop, Manuel Acuna, told them, quote, the demon exists. He's not an idea, he's not a theory, he's not something abstract. The devil is a personality and therefore has a strategy. We are talking about something terrifying, a fallen angel. The devil is not a metaphor. This is when they then took Laura into a chamber and began performing an exorcism. A local man who was there to pray for her was even quoted as saying, we could hear her screaming and crying and we prayed for her deliverance. She was a good girl but turned bad when the devil possessed her. She had to be exorcised. She had to be free. In the end, it is said that the exorcism was successful and that Laura was free from the demons that are said to have been controlling her. In our number eight spot today, we have Anna Eklund. This is the real story behind the one that was made famous by the 2016 horror film, The Exorcism of Anna Eklund. In reality, the name of the woman who this story happened to is Emma Schmidt and she was born back in 18. 
1882. It is said that once she got a little bit older, she began exhibiting some strange behavior, like being clearly uncomfortable or unable to deal with holy objects, quote, disturbed thoughts, and the inability to enter churches. Many people believed that she was possessed, and they also believed that the source of this possession was her aunt Mina. Mina was said to be a local witch who was placing spells on herbs for the food she prepared, and it is said that she was also the lover of Emma's father. Because of this belief that she was possessed, this sent Emma into a wild few years that involved two long exorcisms. The final of the two lasted from August 18th to December 23rd, 1928, and in the end, it is said that it was successful. People reported that afterwards, she only exhibited, quote, milder and, quote, quite manageable possessions. So... I guess that's good news. In our number seven spot today, we have Maricicia Arena Cornici. <laughs> Sorry. This scary story came to us pretty recently in 2005. A Romanian nun named Maricicia was only 23 years old when she began to hear voices. Despite the knowledge of mental health and mental illness in 2005, because of her background, she began to believe it was the devil speaking to her. She was diagnosed and treated with schizophrenia, but she eventually ended up falling back into this very dangerous way of thinking. This is when she became the subject of an exorcism. She was bound to a cross, which is the scary beginning of an exorcism I've ever heard of, and after being bound, she was gagged with a towel and left in a convent room for three whole days without food or water. Unsurprisingly, this sadly resulted in her death. The priest involved, as well as the other nuns, were charged and convicted in relation to this crime, but most have since been released due to the short sentences they received, and instead of taking responsibility for their horrific actions, they continue to blame her death on adrenaline that was administered to her during the ambulance ride. In our Number six spot today, we have George Lukens. Back in 1778, George Lukens was an English tailor who people began to notice was starting to behave in ways that were considered strange. What I mean by this is that it was said that he started speaking in strange voices, making strange sounds, and that he was even singing hymns backwards. Of course, this was 1778 after all, so they decided that an exorcism was in order. They had the event in Bristol's Temple Church, and they had seven priests come to assist, as it is said that he didn't just have the devil hanging over him, but that he actually had seven different demons. The priests commanded the demons who had taken over his soul to leave once and for all. Surprisingly, it is said that this ceremony actually worked, and that when it was over, George recited the Lord's Prayer, thanked all of the priests, and went on his merry way. An exorcism with a happy ending. Don't see a lot of those. In our number five spot today, we have Gottlieb and Dittus. This story comes to us from 1842 from a small German village. In this year, residents of the village began to notice some strange happenings coming from the house of a 28-year-old woman named Gottlieben. She was claiming that her house was haunted, and she began slipping in and out of what people referred to as trance-like states. Other than these claims and what was going on with these states, nothing truly extraordinarily weird was happening, of course, until a religious pastor came along and began performing an exorcism. Gottlieben became super violent, which feels like a pretty fair reaction to an exorcism, whether you were being possessed or not, and she ended up being physically restrained. Here's where things really go off the rails, though. She ended up being restrained for two years. Two years. Not months, not days, not weeks. Years. While multiple exorcisms were performed on her. During these, she was seen vomiting glass, nails, and of course, blood. Despite this horrific story, things ended on an alright note with her telling everyone that the demons were gone and that Jesus is the victor. In our number four spot today, we have Dr. Richard Gallagher. I'm a person who likes to believe in and follow science. You know, it's like the most tangible way to explain things that are seemingly impossible or unreal. You know what I mean? That is why this guy kind of freaks me out so much. So basically, Dr. Richard Gallagher is a certified Ivy League psychiatrist, and he is a self-proclaimed man of science. Like many science people, when he initially heard of exorcisms or possessions, he thought that they were just an ancient and outdated excuse or explanation for people who were actually struggling with different mental illness. Now, however, while still being that self-proclaimed man of science, he had an experience that changed his perspective forever on demonic possession. Basically, it all started when he met someone who was referred to as the Queen of Satan. Her real name was Julia, and she came to the church 
claiming possession. Considering the fact that she was involved of and part of a satanic cult, he wanted to know why, if she really was possessed, that she would want to rid herself of the demons. When the two sat down together, weird things started. She knew strange, intimate details of his life that she had absolutely no reason to know, objects would randomly fly off of the walls, and later, long after their meeting, during a phone call with a priest, both Richard and the priest he was speaking to heard one of the demonic voices it is said that Julia would speak in over the phone, despite the fact that she was literally on the other side of the country from them. In the end, it is said that this experience in meeting the Queen of Satan and all of the subsequent meetings with people like her that he had afterwards caused him to completely change his outlook. He now sits on the line in between the world of science and reason and the world of the unexplainable. In our number three spot today, we have Michael Taylor. This story is about an Englishman named Michael Taylor and it starts off in 1974. Michael was a husband and father of five children, but was unfortunately struggling with frequent bouts of depression, which is difficult for anyone to manage. Seemingly, however, when he met a 21-year-old pastor named Marie Robinson, these bouts became less harsh and more manageable. So far, this seems like a nice little story about someone getting the help they need, but that is not the case at all. Apparently, he claimed his depression was getting better due to the pastor's ability to exercise the demons that were plaguing him with this illness. Michael's wife is like, yeah, okay, likely story, and she confronts him about what she believes is going on, which is that he is having an affair with Mary. After this confrontation, he physically attacks his wife, which then led to him getting an actual exorcism by two ministers on October 5th, 1974. During this exorcism, Michael had seizures, he spit and bit the ministers, and he screamed in tongues. After going through all of that, you'd expect this guy to be free of whatever the heck was going on, but unfortunately, the following day, he brutally took the life of his own wife. If all of this wasn't enough to make a dreadful story, he ended up not even being convicted because the defense argued that the exorcism made him insane. So cursed by the devil or just a terrible person. At this point, we're not really sure. Maybe a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. In our number two spot today, we have The Bell Witch. So this story is one that inspired one of the most classic horror films of all time, The Blair Witch Project. Basically, this story follows the family of John Bell, who is said to have once had this wicked neighbor called Kate Batts. Kate believed that John cheated her out of land, and since there were rumors swirling that she was a witch, there was also a rumor that she cursed the Bell family. Basically, this made it so that the family was now being cursed and basically haunted by a demon. This force would throw pots and pans, spill things, slam doors, rattle chains. It would have members of the family getting scratched, pinched, and sometimes worse by this invisible thing. Things were bad, and when people came to visit the family at the farm, they didn't get any trouble from the spirit, but could hear its voice that was described as being high, scratchy, and shrill. In the end, the farm became an incredibly popular tourist attraction, and one year, John fell mysteriously ill, which people believe was the work of Kate and her powerful spells. To this day, people still report strange happenings at the farm. In our number one spot today, we have Urbain Grandier. Born in 1590, Urbain was a French Catholic priest who was known as being a little promiscuous with some of the nuns. Look, there's no judgment from me at all, but I'm just saying, the Catholic Church now doesn't like that. I can't imagine pre-1600s Catholic Church just being cool with that, but anyway, it's said that he actually took quite a public stance against the church's view on celibacy. Because of his escapades, there were points where people who had indulged with him were now accusing him of witchcraft and using dark magic in order to tempt them. This led to a trial which did end in acquittal, but France's chief minister named Cardinal did not like Urbane at all. The priest had apparently published some less than kind criticisms about him, so naturally Cardinal returned the favor and ordered a second trial. This time Urbane was put through some grueling interrogation and while it certainly was inhumane, it led to the discovery of quite a document, one that was apparently found in his belongings. It was a contract that is said to have been written in Latin and covered with strange symbols. The contract was signed by Urbane as well as several demons, including the devil himself. Basically, the contract promised Urbane the love of women, the respect of monarchs, that sort of thing, in exchange for his allegiance to the devil. In the end, this led to Urbane being found guilty of making a deal with the devil, and he was sent sentenced to death. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. And don't forget to hit that link down in the description and check out Magellan TV. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye! What's up, what's up, what's up everyone? Starting off in our number, er, starting off. Moving on to our number nine spot. <laughs>
In our number seven spot today, we have Maricicia. Maricicia. <laughs> Maricicia Irina Cornici. Cornici. Sure. 